Hey, okay, so example seven, then we have, um, it says, all right, uh, let's summarize our findings. Uh, given the, the graph of the function f of x equals 4x minus x squared shown at the right, yay, uh, to determine how fast the graph of, of f of x is changing when x is equal to 1. Okay, well, that's another way of saying what is the instantaneous rate of change. And that is another way of saying what is the slope of the tangent line. And that is another way of saying what is the derivative when x is equal to 1. Th these are all the same thing. They're all the same thing. So uh, it says use the difference quotient to find um, the uh, approximation, the average rate of change, uh, an approximation of that if I'm really, really close. I mean, I don't even think I could draw the, the one that's going between uh, 1 and, and f of 1.001 1 uh, by hand. It'll look exactly like that one. They would be so close to each other. Okay, so, uh, so the slope of that secant then would be equal to uh, y2. That looks nice. Minus y1. I spoke too soon and my pen just died. Okay, there we go. And then the bottom would be uh, those two subtracted one. The, by those two, I mean the x values. All right. And then let's have the calculator do that for us. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, I went ahead and went to y equals, and then I typed in the function 4x minus x squared. Okay. And so then... Uh, I want to go here and have myself a pretty fraction. Very nice. And then go to variables, y variables, function, y1. And But I want to be, have that evaluated when it's 1.001. Cool. And then I know that I could do this one by hand, but let's just be consistent. Uh, variables, y variables, or vars if you prefer. And then at 1. Okay, and then in the denominator, it's just 0 0.001, right? You're subtracting 1.001 minus 1. And boom. Man, that's close to 2. <laughs> if you were going to think, what is the actual in instantaneous rate of change there? Maybe it's 2. Okay, well, that's what um, we're about to find out here. The average rate of change between uh, these points, if I move down the line some random amount h okay and then so the average rate of change then like uh the slope of uh, secant and so this one i could you know maybe i could draw it and uh, you know uh just some over some over here is h you know so h from there to there you know something like that and then it'd be this line okay which we would use uh to approximate but uh on part C, we're going to send H to zero. Okay. So, all right, so here we go. So we're not sending H to zero just yet. So it's just going to be the average rate of change. So the average rate of change, by the way, it's my second time doing this one because I messed up the first time. All right. So this is going to be, um, all right. So F, this is Y2, F of one plus H minus Y1 Okay, over 1 plus h, that's x2 minus x1, all right, which is going to be h on the bottom, okay? So then, all right, let's just keep going with this. So if I substitute 1 plus h, and here's where I messed up earlier, if I substitute 1 plus h right here, it's uh, into uh, both of those slots, a 1 plus h there and a 1 plus h there. That would be 4 times 1 plus h. And then I'm going to subtract out uh, 1 plus h squared. So 1 plus h squared would be 1 plus 2h plus h squared. Okay. Then minus. And now I'm to substitute 1 in. So that would be 4, because, uh, well, I'll show it. 4 times 1 minus 1 squared which is just going to be uh, minus 3. All right, and then let's put all of that over H, okay? And as you know, because we've seen it a million times, uh, anything that does not have an H should go away in the numerator. And here's where I messed up earlier, the second time doing this. This is 4 plus 4H. Four I didn't distribute right there. I just called it 4 plus H, and that messed up the whole stinking thing. All right, so then minus 1, 
minus 2h, because we're subtracting all this, uh, minus h squared. That is that subtraction right there that we're doing. And then because of the difference quotient, uh, then we have minus 3. Okay, so all of that <laughs> over h. Okay, and then let's combine like terms. All right, so if I combine like terms, anything that doesn't have an h goes away. So by, by, by. All right, and then I've got 4h minus... Uh, 4h minus 2h, which is 2h, okay, minus an h squared over h. All right, and then I can factor the numerator or divide both of them by h, however you want to think of it. It's fine. 2 minus h over h, and those cancel out, and then so I have my average rate of change is 2 minus h. Okay, yay, but we haven't done the limit yet, right? So the limit was, uh, it says, okay, what happens to the secant line between those points as h goes to zero? Okay, well, as h goes to zero, um, it, it, that just sends this to zero, so I'm sa it's saying this. So it's the limit as h approaches zero of all of that that we just did, right? But I'm not going to do it again. I'm just going to send h to zero. And there we are. That's two. Okay. Now, so now, okay, so here we go. So this now becomes um, um, this, uh, less than 2, 2. Less than 2, 2 is when we're not dealing with A anymore, we're dealing with X. So in general, find uh, the formula, find the slope of the tangent line at any point given this uh, would be this. The limit of the tangent line at any point by using the points... Wait, is it talking about for that particular equation, or is it talking about, let me see what she put. Uh, oh, yeah, for that for that particular equation. Okay, all right, fine. All right. I didn't know if it was in general, because in general it's going to be what we're going to put in the notes uh, later. All right, and so I guess I don't really need the calculator anymore. Let's move this over here. Let's go there. Perfect. All right, so here we go. So the, uh, the general formula for finding the slope of the tangent line at any given point uh, using the points x, f of x, and then x plus h, and f of x plus h. All right, so, so that would be the limit as h approaches 0. Okay, as h approaches zero. All right, so now, uh, so, uh, I mean, I'll write it out. It's going to be uh, f of x plus h minus f of x. <laughs> over x plus h minus a, uh, x plus h minus x, so just over h. All right, so then we're substituting in, and so it's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, all right, I'm substituting x plus h in to the uh, equation that we have up here, the, the function that they gave us, which is uh, 4x minus x squared, okay? All right, so here we go. So it's going to be uh, 4 times x plus h. 4 times x plus h. Okay, minus x plus h squared. FOIL method on that, all right, uh, minus um, y, y1, which is f of x, so that was 4 
x minus x squared. Okay, all of that over h. Okay, a little color coding here. Uh, this part is all of this. Okay, this part is right here. Okay. Okay, so then, um, so here we go. So I've got the limit. The limit as h approaches zero of all right. Let's clean. Let's clean this up. So I've got four uh, x plus four h minus x squared. minus x squared minus dang it minus 2xh minus a squared Okay, and then we're subtracting both of those, so it'll be minus 4x, and then subtracting a negative x squared plus x squared. All divided by h. Okay. All right, now, as before, uh, anything that doesn't have an h should cancel out. I see that right there. I see that right there. That's awesome. I don't have any like terms to combine, so that's good. So I've got the limit as H approaches zero. And then um, and everything up top still has an H, so I'm going to factor that out. And what do I have? I've got four. Okay. Um, minus 2X. Okay, minus h, because each of those lost an h, divided by h. And now, because since earlier, everything that didn't have an h canc uh, uh, canceled out, that allowed us to cancel the h from the numer uh, numerator and denominator and get rid of the zero over zero problem. And then we can finally send h to zero. So if I send h to zero, I've got the four, didn't have an h, the negative two x, minus two x, it didn't have an h. And we are done. We are done.